Hey guys, this is Victor from SARP Airsoft. I'm going to be doing a gearbox for dummies tutorial, mostly because whenever I first started doing this stuff, it was kind of confusing and there's so much stuff out there and it's really quite simple whenever you get down to it. Um, so throughout this video, I'm just going to be talking about what parts I have, um, what parts, you know, what individual parts do what affects what, what the terminologies are, all that stuff just as my best uh, attempt at getting some kind of a gearbox for dummies video out to help you guys if I can. So just a couple of basic terms that people throw around a lot would be um, shim job. A shim job is how well these gears, these three gears well, most people talk about your three gears, but you really want to incorporate your fourth, which is your uh, pinion gear. But it's your sector, um, spur, and bevel gear that are in your gearbox, and you want to shim them using these little shims. I don't know if the camera can pick them up, but it's just a little shim, and it raises or lowers the uh, height of the gears because, you know, obviously you have your gears fitting like this, and you want to get each one... Um, as close to each other and meshing, but you don't want them, you know, scraping on each other, or else obviously you're going to create too much friction in your gearbox. But that's a little bit more complicated than most of the stuff you'll be dealing with whenever you first get into doing gearbox, like minor repairs and stuff like that. Um, air seal is another term that people u like to use a lot. Air seal is basically controlled by these, this little section part. Um, this is a piston head. It's what will connect to your piston. I don't have it connected right now just so that I can easily show you the uh, piston head itself. It's just a little ported thing with an O-ring on the top, which, um, well, basically all it does is it gets pulled back by your gears and then pushed forward by your spring and shoves a bunch of air through this, which is your cylinder, cylinder head, and then a... Um, air nozzle which is connected to your tappet plate so your tappet plate hooks onto your sector gear like this and whenever it makes a full rotation is pulled back another BB is allowed to feed into the gearbox and it goes forward as the piston goes forward and you know everything pushes air through that and that's how you get your uh, force for your BB to fly out of your barrel etc etc and I might cover pop-ups and stuff like that in a separate video someday if this video does well. If not, then obviously there's not as much of a need as I thought there would be for this. But, um, so most of the time somebody, whenever they're talking about air seal, it's in this little section right here where you've got your piston, your piston head, your cylinder, your cylinder head, and your air nozzle. Um, some air nozzles have a little o-ring in them, which, if you don't know what an o-ring is, Basically, it's just this little tiny rubber ring that runs around the outside of, like, your piston head, um, CO2 guns, gas blowback guns, a lot of, they're relying a lot on O-rings. They're these little rubber squishy things that can be damaged by products like uh, WD-40, anything with petroleum in it, because petroleum and plastic don't tend to react well with each other, and you can kind of corrode your plastic or just weaken it through that. But so that's that's what an O-ring does. It just helps with air seal. Um, it's kind of like a little blockade or something that helps your air be easily uh, pushed or whatever located. So that aside, then we would move on to where your spring and stuff is. Which your spring, I apologize for not having one on me right now. Um, I just got rid of one of them that I had laying around. Um, they go up by powerful ranks. So you start out with, I think, the lowest I've seen is about an M80 spring, and then you can go up all the way to like an M160. But most stock guns will be running either somewhere in between an M100 and an M120. Um, a M100, M120 typically gives you about 400 to 410 feet per second from what I've had. I've had a couple guns with four, um, a one, M120 spring in them. And then as the number goes down, so say an M110 is going to shoot maybe 20 feet per second. Not, I mean, that's not exact, but as the number goes down for your spring, so does your feet per second. 
um, most of the time. But the advantage and why you'd want to change that to a lower spring is that if you have a high speed setup, your gears are going to have way less pickup energy on, say, an M190 than they would an M160. So if that all sounds confusing and stuff, I'd be happy to keep explaining it. Obviously, some of these terms are a little bit hard to explain and stuff, and a lot of this you will just learn naturally whenever you mess through this stuff, but everything out there, it makes it seem so much more complicated than it is, and most of the time the best thing you can do when you're messing with a gearbox is just use common sense, because if you just look at it, you know, your piston's going to fit on this on a little track, a little rail system through there, and you guys probably can't quite see that on camera, I'll try and do a close up, but um, I had to use my phone for this one because I don't know where my camcorder went. But um, aside from the spring, you've got this little piece, and ideally this will have ball bearings on them, which is just a little row with little tiny ball things in them, and it helps absorb, absorb shock and keeps this to be a stronger piece. Um, this one has a little metal plate around it, which is going to help some, but you would ideally you would want to replace this, especially if you're running a higher feet per second build, which um, what this really does is it helps guide your spring, hence the name spring guide, and just kind of helps for everything. Some of them, you know, do a little bit of different things like helping with spring life, but for the most part they're just going to guide your spring so that it doesn't, you know, bend around and wobble like crazy. Um, now, all the air seal and spring components aside, including like tappet plates and stuff, I'm going to move on to the gears, and the gears are also pretty simple, you know, it's just a gear. Uh, they all have individual names, which can be kind of weird and confusing to remember at times. I I never really paid attention to the names of them until, you know, a couple months back. But it's the sector gear, which is the one that pulls back your uh, piston. It connects, you know, right here, pulls back your piston. And then after that, you got your spur, which I just think of a cowboy boot. It's got a little spur on the back of it. And then um, that is just kind of the middle gear. It moves things. It's a flat, thin little flat gear. And then you have your bevel gear, which is what connects to your motor. And that's where you can lose a lot of power. So that's an important, important gear to shim when you're doing that. I might do a video on there, but there's just so many other shim videos out there. And then your motor, which has this pinion gear on it, connects through here like that. And then whenever your motor turns, it turns all these gears, which picks up the uh, piston, etc., etc., etc. So now I'm going to grab a, uh, a uh, wiring connection. So this is what happens. This is what allows for the uh, full circuit inside your gearbox, which a full circuit just means that electric can f electricity can flow from your battery battery into your motor and that turns it on. It's kind of like, I like to think of this as a light switch. Whenever you flip your trigger, just like it would whenever you flip a light switch, you get a full connection here. And obviously, full auto, that connection stays and semi, it turns on and off over and over. So semi is known to wear out your trigger contacts, which are just these small little metal pieces. I don't know if you can see them very well on the camera that, you know, this gets pushed forward, etc., etc. Um, red wires tend to be the positive wi positive wire, and black tends to be the uh, neutral or negative wire. Now, for your bushings or bearings, these are little things like this, and they slip on to the end or axle of a gear, and they aid in spinning your gear around, and that's what you put shims on, those little silver pieces that I showed you earlier. So the shims the shims will change the height in the gearbox, so you don't want a lot of movement and stuff in there, and that's where these come into play. Um, now, on the other side of the gearbox, on this side, I don't have it connected right now, but this is your selector plate. So, this plate hooks in right here, and whenever you, oops, hooks in right here, and whenever you pull the trigger, or flip your gun into either semi, this would be safe, semi would be here, and full auto would be all the way in back. So full, semi, safe, that's pretty much it. There's a little spring in here that connects to a small little lever, a 
Let's see if I have that. It's called your um, cutoff lever, and that is what touches up. But that you know that's that's getting a little bit more complicated. I want to keep this a little bit simpler. Um, then obviously you know you're going to have your trigger, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and your trigger is just going to hook in right here, push forward, and that's what you know makes that full connection. Um, as for motors, I'll just touch up on motors for just a second. The motor, all it really does is it's magnets and copper on the inside, to my knowledge. I'm not really a motor expert on these things, but um, it just turns your uh, pinion gear, which you know transfers the energy through, pulls back your piston, spring resets everything, and that's how you do it. So for most basic repairs and stuff, the I'd say the most likely things that you're going to run into is a stripped piston. And a stripped piston, whenever you hear anybody talking about a stripped gear or a stripped piston, it just means that the teeth, this row of teeth, has either been stripped of the teeth or you've lost a couple or something like that and then you won't get, um, obviously there's going to be a gap to where these teeth aren't going to connect and it's just going to spin freely and it's going to be a loud whizzing sound and it's pretty identifiable once you've heard it. Um, what you can do to combat that is to get a metal road or metal teethed piston. Um, I've never had a piston strip on me too bad and it's fairly easy repair. All you do is you just literally pop a new one in. Um, most you're gonna have to do is replace this, which there's a little screw on the inside of most of them to replace that. Um, if you guys have any questions or comments or anything like that, um, I know my way around gearboxes pretty well. I'm definitely not the best guy out there to do these, but um, I am our team tech, and so I've had a little bit of experience, I guess you could say, working with these guns. Um, and so, you know, if you guys have any questions about shimming, I'll try and dummy it down my best. And, you know, again, the, the main reason for me making this video was because it's it's confusing whenever you first start out to get into all this stuff and figure it out, you know, because there's all, it seems like all the videos out there expect you to already know all this stuff, and it's kind of hard to find one that doesn't expect you to already know this stuff. So, now I'm going to pick up the camera real quick and do a little bit more of a close-up picture of the gears and stuff, just in case you couldn't quite see them, because I had this resting on a pod and my camera doesn't have the best zoom. So this is a uh, bearing on a gear. Bearings or bushings, whichever one you prefer. Uh, some get ball bearing bushings. Again, ball bearings are more for durability and stuff like that. Longevity of your gearbox. Let's see, I'll show you this thing again. This is the uh, boom. So that's what that's what um, connects your uh, full circuit. Sorry, I kind of brain farted there. And then, you know, obviously you've got your wiring and your wire connectors and all that. But that's pretty basic. Um, sorry if it's a little bit shaky. I'm just holding the camera now. Um, obviously, a port, that's where the air gets into the cylinder, etc., etc. So this video went on pretty long. Um, if there's anything I missed out on or that you'd like to see in specific, just shoot me a message. Um, either on this video or I guess the channel discussion. Remember to like, comment, rate, subscribe, all that junk, and sorry for the uh, video having to be flipped upside down. But um, I hope that you guys could get something out of this. And I might redo this video in the future if I ever catch any mistakes. Um, if you guys catch any mistakes, definitely tell me. Um, I really don't want to be spreading any false information. Um, Airsoft GI makes these Airsoft GI 101 gearbox anatomy part uh, little pamphlets and they tell you all the names and stuff like that and basically similar to what I just mentioned um, soon I should be doing a video on this this little lever um, that can be a pain in the butt whenever you're first starting to mess with these but um, that's it for this video like I said please uh, rate comment subscribe all that good stuff and I will see you guys next time.